Milk, it does a body good. You may remember this slogan used in advertisements for cow's milk, but it's even more true for human infants and human milk. Breastfeeding reduces the risk of diarrheal and respiratory diseases in infants. The feeding of human milk to preterm infants reduces the risk of necrotizing enterocolitis up to sixfold. Necrotizing enterocolitis is a devastating disease that affects the intestines of the infants. The intestine becomes severely inflamed and damaged and often deteriorates. <coughs> we don't know what the causative agent of necrotizing enterocolitis is, but what we do know is that there's a change in the bacterial communities of the infant's gastrointestinal tract that is associated with the development of this disease. This has led our lab to ask the question, what are the factors that are in human milk that affect the bacterial colonization of the infant's gastrointestinal tract? Human milk is a very complex fluid. It's comprised of proteins, lipids, carbohydrates, and living cells. These living cells include not only immune cells as pictured in the center portion of the slide, but also bacterial cells. We've known that milk does contain or can contain bacteria, but that bacteria was thought of as being a contaminant. But through high throughput sequencing at the U of I genomics core, we now know that healthy human milk contains a diverse community of bacteria. But this has led to more questions. What are the factors that impact how that bacteria changes over time? How does the milk bacteria impact the infant's gastrointestinal tract? To, these questions have been the focus of my research. To answer these questions, we conducted a study in which we recruited 21 women from the Moscow pulmonary who were healthy and collected milk samples. And also we collected infant fecal samples from their infants. The fecal samples actually are a proxy for what goes on the, in the infant's gastrointestinal tract. And what we found was that milk does indeed contain a diverse community. Some of the bacteria remain relatively unchanged throughout lactation from day two to six months. Other bacteria actually are higher earlier in lactation and then decrease over time. We're still working on analyzing the infant fecal data as well as the interactions that occur between the milk bacterial community and the infant bacterial community. Our goal and the impact of this research is such that by looking at these things we can develop novel methods to, in, to improve infant health and perhaps reduce the incidence of devastating diseases such as necrotizing intercolitis. So although we don't know all the answers yet, just remember this, human milk, it does a baby good.